Okay, I know the title of this video is gonna seem kind of aggressive, but uh, don't don't worry. I'm not like calling any particular people out here, and I'm not attacking anyone, or n not even really attacking any viewpoints here. I just noticed something that really irks me, and it's basically that no one seems to understand how villains work, or at least on YouTube and the internet in general, whenever people talk about villains and if they're doing writing advice like how to write villains, or even if they're just reviewing something and examining how villains work, just anything like that, they never seem to totally understand what they are and what they're supposed to be. And so I'm just doing this video, it'll probably be short, or at least relatively short, uh, about how they're supposed to work and how no one seems to understand that. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. Okay, so before we really get into this, just ask yourself, what is a villain? Like, you know, or an antagonist, if you'd rather. Like, what are they supposed to be? In a story, what role are they supposed to serve? Fundamentally, they are an obstacle. You know, they are there to prevent the hero or the protagonist, you know, whatever term you prefer to use there. They are there to prevent them from reaching their goal, whatever that goal may be. Now, it isn't necessarily a person. You know, a villain can be a person. In fact, I'd say most of the time it's that. There are other types of stories, though. You know, there's the classic man versus man, but there's also stuff like man versus society, or man versus nature, or man versus self. You know, that sort of thing. The point is that the villain is there to make their goal difficult. Whether their goal is to become the president, or just survive, or save the world, or something like that. It has to be hard for them to do, otherwise there's no real conflict. So, the villain is there to serve as an obstacle to that. Like, you know, if it's a man versus nature story, they get shipwrecked on an island, well, nature is just everything around them and it's trying to kill them. If it's a man versus self story, it could be something like he has a severe drug addiction and he's trying to get better, but it has to be difficult for him to get over that. You know, it can't just be, oh, I don't feel like doing heroin anymore, so I'm gonna stop now. Like, that's very boring. You know, there, there'd be no conflict in that story, and therefore it would be an extremely boring story. Like, it, it has to be hard. You know, and, and another bit, a bit more of a flashy example would be in pretty much every shonen battle anime ever made, the, the hero has crazy powers and is super strong and likes to fight dudes, and then the villains, uh, or rather a succession of villains usually, uh, they have to be as strong or stronger than the heroes because it has to be difficult for the heroes to fight them and defeat them. You know, like if they were just uh, mooks that got taken out real easy, then, well, what, what would be what would be the point in reading? It would, it would be, or watching, whatever. Anime and manga are basically the same thing, fight me on that, but what, what would be the point in reading or watching? You know, like the, the story would have no tension, no real conflict, no real story. And I feel like a lot of this seems basic, you know, it seems like, yeah, everyone knows this, but I never seem to hear anybody bring it up. You know, whenever people talk about villains, whether it's talking about this villain that they liked in a review, or whether they're talking about how to write a good villain or anything like that, they always seem to talk about uh, the villain's motivation, you know, how to make them complex and interesting. Now, don't get me wrong, that's obviously still very important. I'm not saying, like, oh, you're all wrong, villain motivation doesn't matter. Like, no, I'm, that's not at all what I'm saying. Uh, the best villains are both, is the thing. You know, the, the best villains are complex and have interesting motivations and are also very powerful. Like, uh, probably, probably the best example of this that I can think of from the past couple of years would be Thanos from Avengers Inf Infinity War. Now, the first time we really see Thanos, he has already taken out Thor, who we know is extremely powerful, and then we see him just completely wipe the floor with Hulk, who we know is also extremely powerful. Like, he doesn't even break a sweat when he does it, and he doesn't use any of the Infinity Stones, which we know, uh, when he gets those, those are also very powerful, so he gets stronger and stronger as the movie goes on. And that's the thing, we know right from the beginning, and we continue to know throughout the rest of the film, Thanos is a threat. He is threatening, he is intimidating. And yes, he does have some interesting motivations for doing what he does. I'm not saying that he isn't a kind of a complex character. He's still wrong, obviously. You know, he's still a villain. He's still a bad guy. He's still going out to kill a bunch of people. 
uh, for reasons which don't really make any sense when you actually think about it, but he is an interesting character. You know, you know he you know, he's fun to watch, let's say that. And he has a lot of presence when he's on screen, but none of that would matter in the slightest if he wasn't a threat. You know, he if he uh, had just managed to steal the stones, let's say, like he stole them through some clever plan or whatever, and then when he fought the Avengers, they just beat him without any trouble, then, well, why, he wouldn't work as a villain then. Because... That's the thing. Fundamentally speaking, Thanos is an obstacle to the heroes saving the world. And if you really want to get into Infinity War, it's actually kind of structured with Thanos as the protagonist, but that's a, that's a different discussion, I think. And that's something that I just don't ever hear people talk about, you know, people that like Infinity War, because a lot of people really enjoyed that movie. Even people who aren't super into Marvel movies said, yeah, that one was pretty good. Uh, and a big part of the reason for that was because of Thanos, but they barely ever talked about how his threatening aura is what made his complex motivations really work in the story, you know, because other than that, he might have been an interesting character, but he wouldn't have affected the story much. And yeah, so basically what I'm getting at is that these are equally important, okay? The, the villains having complex motivations and interesting motivations and just being interesting characters in their own right and then on the other hand, they still have to be an obstacle, okay? And that goes for, again, whether it's man versus man, man versus nature, man versus self, man versus God, whatever it is, uh, he, it has to be an obstacle. There has to be some threatening uh, aura or an intimidating aura. Like, they have to be able to stop the hero from completing their goal, or at least it has to feel like they might do it. Now, this doesn't have to necessarily be physical power, like even if it's a man versus man story, but they have to have some sort of advantage of some sort. You know, like, maybe they're in a position of power, like they're a king or a president or something, and they use that uh, institutional authority to do b nasty things. Like, jo Joffrey Baratheon would be a good example of this. Like, is he a particularly smart character? Not really. Is he a particularly tough fighter or anything? Not particularly. But he is king. You know, he, he is king throughout the story, and he uses that uh, authority and that power to do really unpleasant things to people, and they're not completely helpless to fight back against it, but they can't do a whole lot against it at first because, well, he's the king. There's a lot of people that are uh, willing to do what he says, either because he pays them or just because it's the law and they're going along with it or whatever. There's a lot of reasons for it. The point is, he has that institutional power, so even if he is not the most... Uh, intimidating person on his own, he is still a threat and he is still an obstacle to the heroes. Another fun example would be like Lex Luthor, at least when Lex Luthor is done properly. You know, Superman is a fucking god, <laughs> you know, there's, there's basically nobody who can fight him toe to toe, so there's no one who's really a threat to him, but Lex Luthor is really smart. He can come up with clever strategies, clever plans, invent new technology, all sorts of stuff which would uh, that, that can pose a threat to Superman. I completely forgot words for a second, but I'm not doing more. I got more stuff to film. Let's keep going. And so on and so forth. There's other examples of this, but I don't want to just list those off mindlessly. Uh, the point is, those are both very important, and I'm not gonna come here and say, like, oh, one is more important than the other. If you have to choose one, then choose this one, because, like, ideally, you should have both. And if you feel like you can only have one and not the other, then you need to fundamentally look back and rewrite some stuff. And all that said, if you can't have either of those, if you cannot make your villain a proper obstacle to the heroes and you cannot make them complex and interesting in their own way, then at least give them personality. Now what I mean by this is just make them entertaining to watch or read or whatever it is. Like, probably the best example of this would be Profion from the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Like, that's a terrible movie. Profion's not a good villain, you know, the heroes defeat him without too much trouble, really, and he doesn't have any real reasons for wanting power, he's just, yes, I'm an evil dude who wants to take over, but he's by far the best part of the movie, because Jeremy Irons just has the craziest, most over-the-top performance of him that I think I've ever seen in a villain.
You can run, your ladyship, but you'll never run far enough. Let their blood rain from us, like, it's genuinely hysterical to watch him throughout the whole movie. It's really, really fun, and I... Because of that, he's just the best part of a really terrible movie. I mean, granted, that whole movie is terrible to the point where it's funny, but still, the point is, Jeremy Irons as Profion, even though he's not, like, a good villain, I don't think I could really say, oh yeah, he's interesting or threatening or anything like that, but he's just so much fun to watch, and... That's a million times better than apathy or just thinking that, uh, oh, he's he's fine, I guess. Like, it's a million times better. But, uh, you know, that's, that's that's about all I have to say. I, I feel like others have given much more in-depth uh, advice on how to write good villains. Because, you know, I mean, that's not what this video is even really about. It's not about, oh, here's how you write proper villains. It's just odd to me how no one ever mentions this aspect to them. Like, you know, make, make your villains... A proper threat to make them an obstacle otherwise all the complex motivations and everything in the world aren't going to matter and uh that's about it goodbye special thanks to everyone who watched this far including and especially my patrons and channel members my ten dollar and up patrons include oppo savalainen olivia rayan brother santodes buffy valentine carolina clay christopher quinton dan antless ants ants dan echo joel karkat getsune liza rudakova lord tiebreaker Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Micah Phone, Sad Mardigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Vey Victus, and of course, all the other names listed here. You guys are great. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do this. If you want to get your name put up here, then consider becoming a patron. You get stuff like early access to my videos, and if you don't want that, then how about maybe just becoming a channel member, or dropping me a tip over on PayPal, or just, you know, sharing this um, video. I just, you, yeah, you get the picture. Goodbye. Bye.